Okay, uh, welcome to the uh, lesson on uh, polar graphs and cardioids. Uh, this is lesson five, the final lesson of the unit. Uh, our focus for this video is primarily going to be on uh, rows, curves, and uh, cardioids, and then on the third objective, which will be for uh, to make connections between the graphs uh, of the rectangular and polar trig equations, uh, and specifically some of those connections will be in the form of intersections. Okay, and so uh, I'll try to keep this to 15 minutes. Uh, probably won't be able to because there's a, quite a few examples. Um, what I'm going to be doing from time to time in the video is pausing and doing some of the um, working and writing out uh, off screen. Uh, please take advantage of those moments to try the uh, problems yourself, to try to work some of them instead of just being passive and, and copying what you see. It's going to help a great deal with your understanding if you, uh, if you try to make the connections yourself. Okay, and so uh, we're starting with our do now. Uh, we have to determine the location of the tips of the petals uh, and our uh, uh, function, which has been, or sorry, rather our relation, which has been given uh, in polar form, uh, in the form, uh, uh, or rather in terms of r and theta, is r equals 5 cos 4 theta. And this time we've been instructed to do it algebraically. Up until, that, up until now, we've been focusing on a graphical approach. And so I'll show you the algebraic setup and also the, um, the graphical uh, relationship to it. And then we're going to graph our um, uh, polar curve. And so hopefully you're going to uh, recognize this as a, a rose curve. Uh, also important, of course, that we show the starting point and the direction of the curve. Okay. And so I'll show you the first step of the algebra and then hopefully uh, you will uh, at this point be able to, um, I'll pause and then I would like you to go ahead and try the algebra yourself. Okay, and so what we should be able to identify from this is that if we look at the function 5 cos 4 theta um, uh, and we um, think back to last unit, all that is is the cosine function uh, with an amplitude of 5. And so what that is, uh, is going to mean is that uh, our maximums uh, and our minimums uh, are going to uh, occur at plus and minus 5. And so algebraically, our setup is to solve the equation 5 cos 4 theta uh, equals um, plus or minus 5. And that will yield the theta values. Uh, for which we have maximums and minimums, and those are, of course, the tips of the petals. Okay, so I'm going to pause at this point and get some of the uh, working done off screen. Okay, and so uh, what you can see is uh, I equated 5 cos 4 theta to plus minus 5. I've divided through by the 5. Um, I have moved cosine to the other side using the arc or inverse function. Uh, 4 theta is equal to pi n. Uh, that is, of course, because uh, cos is the ratio of x to r. Uh, it's going to be equal to 1 on uh, the positive and negative sides of the x-axis, which are multiples of pi. And my final step is to divide through by 4. And so algebraically, uh, every uh, uh, pi over 4, uh, we are going to be able to have one of the tips uh, of the petals for the um, uh, graph, uh, the rose curve, uh, r equals 5 cos 4 theta. What I've done is shown you graphically uh, how that would look and how you would connect it to the algebra. And so we have a maximum at 0, a minimum at pi over 4, a maximum at pi over 2, and so forth. And so what I'm going to do now, uh, you'll also notice on the polar graph that I've started by marking uh, where each of the petals uh, will uh, be, uh, where, the, where the tips of the petals will be and that's uh, rotating multiples of uh, pi over 4. And then the last thing we need to make sure um, that we understand is the starting point and direction of the curve. Um, and so it going from 5 to 0 and back to 5, uh, uh, in this case, on uh, eight uh, different occasions. Of course, that does connect also to the last lesson. Uh, if we've got 4 pi, it's an even function. The number of petals is going to be uh, uh, 8. Okay, and so I'm going to number these, and then you'll see them number on the graph, and then I'll come back. All right, and so the uh, the next piece uh, that I wanted to show you, uh, what I've done is I've gone in and I've numbered uh, the maximums and the minimums, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way through to 8, uh, in the order in which they happen. Uh, you'll notice over here that our starting point when uh, theta is 0 is at 5, 
and then I'm going to translate that information over uh, to the polar graph and so uh, at theta is equal to zero we have a value of five that's our starting point and then what I've done is I've numbered each of these maximums and minimums to the corresponding points on the polar graph uh, and that's going to allow us to know the order in which the petals are going to be drawn uh, not enormously important except in the in the conceptual understanding of course of uh, the fact that when the graph is a negative then we're graphing in the opposite quadrant and so forth and so that's why you'll see the number doesn't the numbers do not follow uh, a, a regular arithmetic sequence one through eight okay and so what that means is I'm going to be graphing for the first part I'll just show you the first piece here so that you can get a sense of it and then I'll finish it up off uh, off camera and so uh, my graph is going to rotate around here uh, and then uh, going to go, uh, sorry, not very well drawn, through to the second peak over here, uh, and then again I'll pause over there. Um, the second peak over here is going to correspond, of course, to an angle of um, pi over 4, and then pi over 4 over here you can see we're on the negative portion, and so we're graphing behind. Instead of being at position 6, we're at position 2, uh, and then we're going to continue uh, along that pattern. And so back to 0, uh, up to position number three, uh, round, we're back to zero again, and then I'm going to position number four, and once again, when I'm at position number four, I'm at three pi over four, but I'm graphing instead, we, we of course know three pi over four is in the second quadrant, but I'm graphing behind, and so goes the pattern. Okay, and so now you can see our uh, completed uh, uh, rose curve uh, with our eight petals, uh, last kind of detail to put on the graph is of course that we started uh, at 0, 5 and the direction in which we traveled uh, followed in this case the, the the numbers and so we went 1 through to 2 uh, up to 3 and so forth and so I'm just adding in um, the arrows which indicate the uh, direction uh, of our uh, the plot of our graph okay and so finish that off uh, and then we move on to uh, the final, uh, uh, sorry, the, the next uh, example, not the final example, but the first example. Okay, and so again, uh, in this particular case, what we're going to start to do now is move into the uh, realm of the cardioids, so not uh, rose graphs, um, but our approach is going to be very, very similar. Um, what you can see with the, uh, the rose graphs is that we've got uh, no real translation. We would interpret this, of course, as a translation in a uh, in a rectangular um, uh, or Cartesian uh, grid. Uh, whereas uh, in this particular case, we're playing around with the amplitude and the period. Here, we're starting to play around um, with the uh, the vertical and horizontal shift, and we're going to see what that looks like uh, in a polar graph. Okay, as before. Um, uh, try to be uh, active in the connections that you're making and so start off by sketching uh, the trig function 2 plus 2 cos theta for the given domain uh, and then what I want you to do is go ahead and fill in the values uh, on the table um, uh, mark off the relevant um, uh, rotational angles theta values uh, on the polar grid and start to plot those points and then we'll be able to see uh, what shape that takes uh, just as a, as a suggestion uh, is a uh, nice handy, um, uh, not trick, but, but it is handy to have um, the values for the special right triangles. Uh, and one of the ways that you can do that is just to use kind of a, a first quadrant grid. Um, we've got uh, pi over 6, uh, pi over 4, and pi over 3, 60 degrees. Um, and what we're going to do is write in uh, the values for uh, the X and the Y, uh, which of course are sine and uh, cosine in the context of uh, polar coordinates. Sorry, let me just correct that. And so uh, I'll write that in. Uh, and there are of course uh, variations on these forms if you rationalize the denominator. Um, and uh, it doesn't really matter which one of those uh, you use. We don't expect that denominators are rationalized. It's really just that you can recognize that 1 over root 2, uh, an alternate form of it, is root 2 over 2. And so that will help you uh, in uh, filling out 
the R values uh, more efficiently and also sometimes with the graphing. Okay, so go ahead and give that a go. Okay, so welcome back. Hopefully you have something that looks like this. So we've just got our uh, uh, graph 2 plus 2 cosine theta. Uh, we've been shifted up by 2, so our center line is at 2. We've got an amplitude of 2, uh, and so our cosine, cosine graph at 0 is going to be starting at 4. Uh, and then we're going to have our minimum at pi, which is going to be 0, uh, and back to our maximum at 2 pi. Of course, given the domain, uh, that final point is not included. Uh, I've just highlighted one key point here on the graph, and that is at pi over 3. You can see graphically we're going to have the value of 3. Uh, if I come down here to the table, let me just explain very quickly how we can get that. Of course, uh, if I were to substitute uh, in pi over 3, we have 2 multiplied by uh, cosine of pi over 3. Uh, cosine of uh, uh, pi over 3 is, of course, going to produce the numerical value 1 half. We multiply that by 2, we add 2, and algebraically we can confirm that the value should be 3. We've specifically targeted these angles over here because each of them is going to use a multiple of 1 half, and that's going to allow us to get integer values. And if we can use integer values on our polar graph, we're going to be able to graph uh, more accurately. And then the next thing to note, uh, two other things, um, even though it's on the table, we're not including uh, the point 0.42 pi because it's outside of the domain. And anyway, at that point, uh, we've made a full rotation and we will have completed our polar graph. Second thing to note is that on the um, polar graph that I've marked off um, the uh, theta values that correspond to the table values, what remains to be done is to plot the points uh, and then to join them. And so that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, and so all I've done here is I've transferred each of these points onto the polar graph. What you should be able to hopefully see is this point over here is our starting point. Uh, we are starting uh, at the value uh, 4, so on the fourth ring, um, uh, when theta is equal to 0. Uh, when we rotate to pi over 3, you can see our numerical value is going to be 3. At pi over 2, we move to 2, and so forth. And then we are going to join uh, those points. And the graph we're going to get uh, is going to look approximately uh, like a heart, hence the name uh, cardioid. The other thing that we'll need to add on, of course, is the uh, direction. Okay, and so that uh, is the first of the cardioid, uh, cardioid graphs. Uh, what you should do at this point is go ahead uh, and for uh, examples two, three, uh, 2 and 3, uh, go ahead and go through the exact same process as you did before. So you're going to complete the table, use the um, rectangular trick graph to help you to complete that table, plot the points, and draw the cardioid uh, graphs for the next two. And then I'll come back to you and we can start to look for some patterns and identify uh, what takeaways we have from a comparison of the three grids uh, graphs. All right, so welcome back. So what you should see here now is... Uh, we graphed 2 minus 2 cos theta. Of course, we had 2 plus 2 cos theta on the previous page. Uh, in terms of the trig graph, that causes a, a reflection over the center line. Uh, what the net effect is for the polar graph, as you can see, uh, is that instead of going out to the uh, 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 right-hand side of the x-axis, the graph is now oriented the other way. Uh, and uh, what we should also note, of course, is that uh, the start is at zero. Uh, the direction uh, is uh, uh, as before, and so obviously we are going in a counterclockwise direction, but notice that uh, obviously the graph is the same shape, but it has uh, effectively been reflected over uh, the uh, vertical axis, but the starting point uh, uh, is not reflected. In other words, in the previous graph, our starting point was at zero 05. This time our starting point is at zero zero. Uh, then we go ahead through the same process and we graph uh, uh, 2 plus 2 sine theta. Um, again, uh, we use the uh, 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 trig graph in order to identify key points, uh, translate those on, uh, and we have our start this time at 0, 2, which corresponds here, uh, and our counterclockwise direction. Uh, the next task for you, so I'll, I'll pick this up in part 2, will be to see if you can answer parts... Uh, B and C, and then to go ahead uh, and see if you can identify the effect 
of the value a.